Right, <clears throat> here we go. Um, change of period, change of region. My name is Klaus Peterson, and I, I work for a uh, county museum in south central Sweden, John Shipping. Um, this is basically a case study, and uh, the study was made in cooperation with um, the fire protection engineer Fredrik uh, Johansson from the fire and rescue services in Jönköping municipality. However, Fredrik couldn't uh, attend here because he is a busy man and we had a major fire in another historic town center a few weeks ago, so he had to do his job basically. Anyway, when speaking of the effects of an ongoing climate change and its impact on the cultural heritage, the dismal prospect for our coastal regions catches the attention. But in this paper, I will try to outline another natural process, isostatic uplift, which causes a similar situation for some inland locations. My example is Jönköping, a mid-sized Swedish town with a historic core area dating back to the early 17th century. And this is where the roots of the alarming situation is to be found, because the new fortress town of 1613 was planned in the Dutch fashion, on a low peninsula protected by open water and wetlands. It was a wet site already from the beginning, and it has, it has remained so ever since. I will also mention the cooperation initiated between archaeologists and the, of the County Museum and the Fire and Rescue Services of Jönköping Municipality, an exchange of information and ideas that comes handy in planning for the future and in assessing risks and by using experiences of the past. Right? Which one is this? It doesn't enter. See, enter. There you go. Enter. But it enter all the way to the end. To the end. Oops. Oh, Oops. Uh, this one. Oh right, right, right. Uh, we can maybe start again. <laughs> all the way back. All the way back. Yes. Yeah. It goes fast. All right. Everything begins with Lake Vettern, the second biggest lake in Sweden, an inland sea or rather an inland fjord. It's an open width of water with steep shores and a few islands, say for the Sol of Visingsö in the south and a small archipelago in the north. The lake measures 135 kilometers from north to south and is 31 kilometers wide. It's deep, it's cold, with a maximum depth of 120 meters and holds an estimated volume of 77.6 billion cubic meters of fresh water. <coughs> and unfortunately, there's only one outlet, the Mutalaström River, situated in the northeast part of the lake. But it is famous, or rather feared, for storms and strong currents, making navigation difficult from the, before the age of steam. Especially the northerner can cause considerable damage with high water and sometimes storm surges in the southern lake basin. That can be bad enough, but there's another slow but relentless change going on in Lake Vettern. Due to a more rapid isostatic uplift in the northern end, this giant mass of water is moving southwards. Seen over a long time, this means that the historic city center of Jönköping will be flooded and drowned. In the beginning of the 17th century, after the devastating Kalmar War against Denmark, the Swedish government decided to replace the medieval town of Jönköping with a more modern fortress town. It was to be built in a Dutch fashion, low-lying in the landscape, using water and marshes as the first line of defense. So the old and dry site was abandoned in favor for a flat peninsula situated between the lakes. The town and the fortress was a major investment for the crown. It was to become a strategic lock for on the vulnerable southern border. It was planned on an ideal, as an ideal Renaissance town, following the principles of the famous 16th century Dutch architect and mathematician Simon Stegen. It might have been an ideal place for a fortified 17th century town, at least when seen by a Dutch fortification specialist or the Swedish king on, or, and his council. But those forced to live in the new Jönköping knew from the beginning that this was indeed a highly unsuitable place for a town. Elo eloquent complaints were made with no avail. The, the decisions taken were not changed and the building process started in earnest in 1614. But before any houses could be erected or streets laid out permanently, an estimated 20,000 wagon loads of landfill was needed to create a somewhat semi-solid ground to build upon. The new town rested on timber caissons and landfill laid out over former lake floor and peat bogs. 
The fortress town remained wet. In excavations undertaken in the 17th century properties, it has been possible to trace a flora and fauna dependent on water and marshes, this being in the built-up core area of an early modern town. One of the complaints made by the burghers to the king before the town was moved was that it would be impossible to build a decent stone cellar on the new site. This shows how aware the stone-to-be inhabitants were. They knew all about the conditions on the peninsula, high ground water levels being one of the more serious problems. Still, they had to try. The results can be seen in the excavations today. Ordinary cellars or half cellars dug below ground level were something tried in the first generation within the new built-up area. Later on, they were replaced by stone cellars constructed as normal houses on ground level foundations. From what can be seen today, it's estimated that the groundwater level in central Jönköping has risen about 40 centimeters since the foundation of the new town, thus drowning previously dry floor levels and other building remains. During the four centuries that have passed since the people <coughs> of Jönköping have had to learn to live with water, water damaging streets and houses during storm floods, water rising in the lake system south of the town, especially during spring and autumn floods, sometimes spilling over into the city. Wet conditions caused by slow but constantly rising groundwater levels, the latter a direct consequence of the isostatic uplift. Let's have a look at the situation today. The average water level in Lake Vetten is 88.52 meters above sea level, with a normal variation on a yearly basis from 87.92 to 88.95. But during heavy rainfalls, rapidly rising water levels in streams and lakes south of the historic town might spill over into the built-up areas. This is what happened in the summer of 2013, when a heavy rainstorm falling within less than 30 minutes flooded the hospital area. From the map it can be seen that there are direct consequences of the water table rising between 0.5 and 1.0 meters, something that is not at all unlikely in the case of a really heavy rainfall and heavy rain will appear more frequently as a consequence of a change in climate, something that we already begin to notice today. For the moment, the city centre is protected, somewhat unintentionally, by the late 19th century railway embankment that was built along the southern shore of Lake Vetten. But the future looks bleak indeed. These simulations of the water levels in the Jönköping Basin are based on the predict predict predicted isostatic uplift and the changes that it will bring about. The first map shows the situation before the new town was founded, before landfill, before levees. The second map shows the normal situation today in 2015. The third map illustrates what will have happened a thousand years from now, with almost all of the historic uh, town town, <coughs> only a few islets remaining. This is, of course, a hypothetic picture when speaking of the town. After all, a millennium is a very long time. Who knows what the world will look like in 2015? But still, the map gives a clear picture of the relentless natural pro process. This flooding of the basin will happen over time, reg regardless of there being a town or not. In the meantime, we can take measures to slow down the immediate consequences, to prolong the life of the historic city centre. The most obvious is to construct a system of levees and to increase the water flow in the outlet, the Motolastram River. And it's of central importance that new built-up areas are planned in safe levels. <coughs> but it is somewhat ironic that the site of the first Jönköping, the medieval town west of the 17th century fortress, remains almost unaffected by rising water levels. In the general plan for development of the Jönköping region, the town is supposed to grow rapidly, having 150,000 inhabitants in 2030. New districts are to be built between, between and south of the lakes, including a new railway designed for high-speed trains. This new town can in many respects be seen as an heir to the 17th century fortress town. It will be part of a regional and national project on a comparable sites. And somewhat disturbing given the facts we know today, some of the sections are to be built on former wetlands. The lowest safe level for new housing has been determined to 90.3 meters above sea level. This altitude is based on research and discussions between the town planners and the rescue services of Jönköping municipality. However, when looking at the drafts, it's striking that so many of the new buildings are placed very close to water, this being the most attractive site for tenement buildings today. And in the extensive urban renewal projects already initiated, closeness to lakes plays an important part. An example is the new concert hall that has been placed well below the agreed safe level, the safe level of 90.3 meters. Mm. 
The Montana Strum River in the northeast is the sole outlet of Lake Vettern, a lake with a drainage area about as extensive as the lake itself. Fishing and in later times hydroelectric power in this river has been important issues, sometimes leading to conflicts with the citizens of Jönköping. The question of the water flow in Motala Strum to protect the fisheries or reducing the risk of flooding the southern part of Lake Vettern has led to some heated debates and a number of different water rights judgments, <coughs> the latest one issued in 1958. However, the isostatic uplift still makes the relative water level rise with about 1.1 to 1.7 millimeters yearly in the basin. This development is clearly illustrated in the diagrams, showing a steadily rising water level in Jönköping between 1900 and 2006. If we turn our attention backward for a moment, it's easy to observe the traces of what the isostatic uplift has caused in earlier periods. For instance, the Husqvarna Bay offers a quite unique submerged inland landscape. Divers can visit the former lagoon at the mouth of the Husqvarna River, swim in an underwater forest, and over peat bog today, four to five meters below the surface. A number of man-made features can also be seen, like cairns, standing stones, rows of poles, and other timber constructions. Finds from the bottom of Lake Vettern includes two swords and a torque from the Bronze Age, once deposited in the peat bog. Another consequence of the southward movement of Lake Vettern is the erosion of the large gravel ridges at the bottom of the lake basin. Although not in any way as spectacular as the coastal erosion of, let's say, Western Jutland, the loss of land can still be estimated to, an, in an average, about 30 meters in a century. Thanks to this ongoing erosion, the medieval church of Sanna Parish was lost, literally falling over the edges in the 17th century, while the old place names indicates the existence of pre-Christian cemeteries now lost. But let's look at another fortress town, Kristianstad, now in Sweden, but before 1658, an important Danish border fortress. It was in fact a counterpart to Jönköping, a result of the same war, the same causes, the medieval towns were devastated during the war, and this continued in favor for a modern fortress town in a Dutch fashion, thus creating exactly the same problem with reoccurring floods. Well, not having to worry about the isostatic uplift, since uh, Kristianstad is situated close to the uh, pivot line, Kristianstad in its many respects even worse off today than Jönköping. The whole town area is situated between 4 meters above and 2.41 meters below sea level, making the latter district the most low-lying built-up area in Sweden. This, of course, makes the town extremely vulnerable to the effects of changing climate. Well, not having... Uh, right. A quick look at the map says it all. One showing normal water levels for 2015, the other what will be the results of an increase of 2 meters plus a failing system of the levees. Large amounts of money have already been invested in an expanded system of dams and levees in the Kristianstad region. But these are more a precaution in case of violent spring floods, known to appear a few times per century, the last one in 2002. But will these measures be sufficient in times of a changing climate? I doubt it. What we're facing are an, is an ironic paradox, that the fortress towns once protected by water has now become civil settlements whose very existence is threatened by water. We have to live with the consequences of decisions made 400 years ago, and strategic considerations made in the early modern period, when the Dutch ideals of fortifications predominated, has left us with some serious problems in the beginning of the 21st century. When looking at Jönköping, we can see an example of what it what was meant to be an ideal Renaissance city, a strong border for, for, fortress protected by water and marshes. But there were a number of complications hidden in this grand project. Unknown to the architects and planners of the 17th century town, the fate of it is sealed. Isostatic uplift, making the large Lake Vettern spill over to the south, will eventually drown the city center even without the changing climate. But the expected heavy rainfalls will undoubtedly make the situation worse. This realization led to a cooperation between archaeologists and the emergency services. With a combination of excavated and written evidence from the past, together with simulations and experience gathered today, possible solutions have been sought after. Temporary as these risk assessments and precautions might be, they can still prove helpful in prolonging the life of the city as we know it. And in doing so, protective measurements taken in this historic early modern environment could prove to be useful examples <coughs> for other sites threatened by climatic and environmental change. Thanks for listening.